Okay, this is John Reed. I'm joined with Graham Robinson. How's it going? Going well, mate. Good day. We are in Barcelona. We are we are talking quietly because we have influencers behind us who are hard at work. I don't know on what. Yeah, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> we just got out of the Burnt Leichert keynote and QA. Uh, this is day one of TechEd, so we, to be fair to SAP, there's a lot that we really haven't learned yet. So this is kind of more of a preview chat than anything. But I do kind of want to get your reactions to what you just heard in the keynote and the QA. And and since you're a classic SAP developer, I'm sure you have some thoughts on how this message yeah. resonates with you. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess uh, um, uh, it was mentioned in the Q&A that it was more like a, a Sapphire keynote right. you know, than a, a tech ed keynote and and certainly as a as a developer and a, and a detail guy um you know i i'm looking for more detail on that stuff and uh, and we touched on some of that in the q a um I, I guess in some respects the keynote's done its job in that it's tweaked my interest on a few things to to go and ask about later in the week and find out about um but um uh, i typically expect from a tech ed keynote a little bit more detail i was a bit surprised as I was in Vegas, that the HANA Express edition announcement, they really didn't drill down a lot in what that was because that's a big thing for developers and developer engagement. Right. And and again here, it was really glossed over and there was a, a question in the Q&A that just showed how little, how, how little their messaging is cutting through. There was a question in the QA which literally said, hey, you've just announced HCP2 and Burnt went, no, we didn't. Oh. I meant you've just announced S4 HANA 2, and he went, yeah. no, we didn't. We announced right. HANA 2, and it just goes right to the heart of some of the messaging issues. I was talking to someone about that before the show because someone from SAP expressed surprise to me that there would be confusion around this. And I said, well, if you call everything HANA, how can you not be confused? Right. <laughs> and it's like, I was like, you have to have some crisp messaging around HANA platform versus cloud platform versus. So from I, I, from a customer perspective, that's tough, right? Um yeah, I think so. I think I think it, you know, may, maybe the platform should be called some name picked out of the air, you know, Azure. Right. You know, it, it, there's no no confusion between what's the cloud offering and what's the desktop offering. It, there no is real it. reason to call it the Hana Cloud platform, is there? But mm. anyway, that's we're not going to win that battle. I don't think. <laughs> I already tried to climb that hill and got pushed back down on my backside. <laughs> um, so you said several things interested you from the keynote that you wanted to follow up on. What would those be? Yeah, I, I mean the developer engagement things top of mind, and the Hana Express stuff. How that's going? Are they starting? I mean, it's early days, but are they seeing the the um, recruitment of new developers to look at that platform and start playing with it? Um, um, I, I asked a question about where are they seeing these developers come from, and how you know I I would have liked a follow up question on how are you measuring that. Mm. Um, uh, I, I've got some. I don't, I don't fully understand how the HANA Cloud Platform and the services that come with that, the business services and the Yaz story interact and link together where where there's demarcation lines between services or APIs provided by Yaz and APIs provided by the HANA Cloud Platform. Why there's a demarcation line there even, I don't really fully understand that either. One of the reasons I like talking with you about this stuff is that you've actually built HANA, I mean not HANA, but SAP applications that you've taken to your customers. And so... I'm I'm always interested to learn, you know, when will this new technology like be so compelling to you and so and so obviously easy to sort out from a licensing perspective that you'll actually say, Hey, I'm gonna build something yeah. for a customer on it. And I've yet to hear you do that. <laughs> uh, no, that's true. I mean I'm I'm a bit of an old cynic as well. So yeah. so I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure that I'm exactly their sweet spot or who they're trying to recruit. But sure. you know, I um if I if I'm gonna take one of my babies an application and deploy it somewhere i got to have a lot of trust in where i'm putting that yeah um, and so one of the things that i'm still working with is 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 that platform the place that i want to do it just from a trust perspective right um, you know sap you know and they're working hard they're making ground with me in terms of but sap aren't my go-to people for running Infrastructure and and a platform for me typically, so right. I, I need to do some, you know, and and it's it's up to me, right? I'm a detail guy. I just need to keep scratching the surface and, and kicking the tires to do it. So that's part of it. And then you know the licensing, the go to market models, the the, the mm -hmm. app store issues, all those things then right. become practical issues that I've got to fit in there as well that you have to think about. Yeah, uh, and the the Hana Express thing is kind of interesting from that regard because before. The SAP show about, I guess, about a month ago was. You wrote a fairly, 
I thought positive review of 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 Hana Express. Well, why do you see that as significant? Is it, is it the ability to download on your laptop that, that sort of turns it's, the corner? It's just getting this new technology into the hands of developers um, in, in a format that they can consume the way they want to. So they can deploy it any way they want to. They can put it on their favorite infrastructure. They can put it on their laptop for goods and sake and learn about it. Associated with HANA Express Edition, and it still needs some work, is a whole lot of tutorials and things like that that people can learn about it. And I'm, I'm going to... Um, try and express this week to the people involved that those things need to be really built out and they really need to make that a living, breathing, growing um, library of information that can can help people not just on how to build things but how to build them right, how to do the right things on HANA. Um, and the, other, the, the amazing thing about the HANA Express Edition is the license lets you take it to production. So mm. you can build an app on, uh, on HANA, you can build it and the only limitation is the size of, of the database, it's limited to 32 gigabytes, but you can take that to production. So if you have a data set inside your organization that you think you could use, drop it into HANA and really build a, a valuable app on top of it, you can do it and take it to production. So in, in your years of looking at SAP's developer tools, this is a significant step forward from pretty much- I don't recall anything that. that I could take to production. Yeah. yeah. All their free trials, all their cloud appliance libraries, all those sort of things. I don't remember anything from SAP that I could take to production without having to worry about licensing issues. So a major step forward, but a lot of questions still to be answered. That'll set the tone for the next absolutely next whirlwind two days, <laughs> as long as we don't make the mistake of going out too late with Tom yeah. Raftery. <laughs> yeah, let's stay away <laughs> In which from case, Tom. we won't be able to coherently function <laughs> the next day. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'll, hopefully we'll either do a wrap podcast on this topic or I'll grab you on a Google video after the show and That'd find out how, how you fared. Thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate it.